This is the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. And in our study series on the book, movie, The Shack, I've come to the conclusion that looking at the study guide and then finding video clips that relate is too difficult a task. And so I'm going to watch the movie again. And as I do, whenever there's a pertinent line, I will jot it down and relate it to one of the lessons that we're going to be studying. For example, yesterday we talked a little bit about forgiveness. And Papa has a remark that she makes to Mac. I can bring amazing good out of the incredibly bad. Our Old Testament lesson this morning comes from the end of the book of beginnings, the book of Genesis, and it brings to a conclusion the story of Joseph. If you're familiar with Joseph, his daddy was Jacob, Jacob's daddy was Isaac, and Isaac's daddy was Abraham. Isaac only had two sons, Jacob and Esau, twins. Jacob had a dozen sons, <laughs> and Joseph was his favorite. And Joseph didn't hesitate to share with his brothers how much of a favorite he was <laughs> and how blessed by God he was. <laughs> and so the brothers decided, we've had enough of this, let's kill him. <laughs> and so they dug a deep pit and they threw him in, but then decided, eh, killing's probably not the best idea. There's a caravan going by, we'll sell Joseph to them. They convinced their father that Joseph has died and Joseph winds up in Egypt, where he's thrown into prison. But while he's there, he interprets dreams for some of the other prisoners. One of them is the king's baker. I guess the croissants weren't very good that morning. <laughs> and so when the baker is restored to his position, and the pharaoh is having trouble with bad dreams, he says, there's a young man down in prison who has a wonderful gift for interpreting dreams. Bring him on out here. And so Joseph interprets for the Pharaoh the meaning of his dreams. That there will be seven years of prosperity and bumper crops, followed by seven years of famine. You need to be storing up barns full of grain now, so that when the years of famine occur, you will have food to sustain you. And Pharaoh says, okay, then I will make you lieutenant governor and I will put you in charge of grain distribution. Well, guess who shows up in front of Joseph seeking a handout? Hmm. It's his brothers. He recognizes them immediately. They don't recognize him. So he decides to mess with them a little bit. And he arranges to have a golden goblet stuffed into the backpack of his now younger brother. He has the guards stop them on their way out of town. They do a backpack search and they find the Pharaoh's goblet. He's accused of theft and they're going to execute him. And that's when the brothers plead and say, don't do that. We've already had to tell our father once that his son had died. Please don't make us do that again. And that's what Joseph said, surprise, <laughs> it's me. You thought we were going to do a bad thing. God turned it into a good thing. And does God always do that to us? From the book of Genesis, chapter 50, verses 15 through 21. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, hey, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph saying, your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, 
Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. This is the Old Testament lesson. Please turn to page 264 in the front of the hymnal. We're going to read Psalm 103, verses 8 through 13. I'll read the even number verses. You read the odd number verses. Psalm 103, page 264. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sin from us. As, as the Father cares for his children, children so, so does the Lord, Lord care for those who fear him. In our New Testament lesson, we continue hearing from Paul's letter to the Christians in Rome. And again, he gives more practical advice for them in how to live a Christian life. He touches on dietary customs, marking the Sabbath, passing judgment on others, and being sensitive to the weakness of others. From Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. St. Paul writes, Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain. And those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat. For God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is therefore their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld. For the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So that each of us will be accountable to God. Here ends our New Testament lesson. We have two anecdotes in this morning's gospel lesson. We have Peter coming to Jesus for reasons we're not quite sure and asking a question about how many times he should forgive a person who has wounded him. There is a theory that Peter and Andrew as fishermen were partners with Zebedee, the father of James and John. And according to this theory, there was some kind of a rift that took place between the two of them over fish. And as a result, Peter was harboring these feelings of resentment. 
And so he goes to Jesus and asks what the limit of forgiveness is going to be. Jesus gives the kind of answer my mother would give. <laughs> he speaks in hyperbole. My mom used to say, if I've told you once, I've told you a million times. Jesus says, no, you don't forgive someone seven times. It's 70 times seven. And then in the second anecdote, we have a story about someone who owed a lord a small amount of money. Couldn't pay it. And in that culture, if you could not pay your debt, you were thrown in prison. And your family sold into slavery. And that's how the debt was paid. But this man begged for mercy and was granted to him. He then went out and encountered a fellow servant who owed him a small amount of money. He demanded payment, and that fellow also asked for mercy, but the first servant would not. And has the second man thrown in prison. And when the master hears about it, he ain't too happy. <laughs> the Gospel of Matthew, the 18th chapter, beginning at verse 21. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 70 times, seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, the Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. And then he went and threw him into prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported it to their Lord, all that they had seen and had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, the Lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 